This is intro for Biobus 436 tomorrow, which, yes, I'm doing it tomorrow. They want me to come in, but I ain't coming in. I read it three days, that's enough. And continue with that, I, I will quit, I don't care. He just got me. <laughs> now I'll find something better, you know what I mean? It's too much. Eight hours is too much for a part time, you know what I mean? All right, Biobus part 36, I think he's gonna be in chapter 18 of the book of we got two more chapters. All right. It's, it's a great day. I'm coming in. All right. This is the intro for Battle Bus 36. I think it's 36. Um, yeah. It's the intro. Um, if I miss it, you guys could download those studies at youtube.com for free. And actually, you could actually get the studies at the website too. I mean, Alright, God bless you guys. And the mix is coming next week or Christmas mix. Don't miss it. God bless. Happy Friday. How's everybody's week? Welcome back to my channel, Soldier of God Army God YouTube channel. Part of a church called Zoe Fellowship in Whittier for King Jesus. He's the one that, he's the boss of this channel. I'm just a DJ host. So the day is Hebrews 11, 1, verse 1. Faith shows the reality of what we hope for. It is the investment, E-V-I-D-E-N-C-E. -E of things we cannot see. That's Hebrews 11, verse 1. Amen. Guys, we're back. And let's pray before I do the announcements. Heavenly Father, we pray right now that people, you know, hear the word, they get into the world, the, the, the word, they become born again in Jesus' name. They change their life from sin to holiness with you. They change their destination from hell to heaven because well, true is hell, and it's more than a prayer, yeah. And that they change their life, they start serving you, Lord, and serve themselves. And in Jesus' name, we pray that the Holy Spirit fellowships right now. And I pray for my bosses to be rebuked in Jesus' name that they find you, Lord Jesus, to guide me with the Holy Spirit. Amen. I pray for my church. Too. Amen. All right, and talking about my church. There's announce announcements here. Ah, Zoe Fellowship, Christ, Zoe Christian Fellowship of Whittier. For December 19th, Sunday, 10.30 a.m. The birth, birth of Jesus. Celebrating the drama. Don't miss it, the 19th. The 19th of this month, December. The drama. God bless. MC DJ host out. Check this out.
Send the wave, the soul of the season. Joy to the world. Joy to the world. Get checks, I don't believe what she says she done with me. Burn some bridges and I let. Que miedo hiciera tanto daño. Nunca olvidé. This has been a test of the emergency alert system, designed to keep you informed in the event of a national, state, or local emergency. Positive, encouraging, K-Love. Positive, encouraging music, K-Love. Sometimes sorrow is the door to peace. Sometimes heartache is the gift I need. You're faithful, faithful in all things In every heart, in every love Old mountain tops, down broken roads You're still my rock, my hope remains I rest in the arms of Jesus, come what may Give to me. We're hurting me. 
circumstances but our outlook now that is a different story and this music sure helps it's mercy me new on kayla can't believe we've come this far and it feels just like getting started somehow we're still running like those kids back then kids back then scrape some knees and falling down but some How we keep getting back up Long as there is one They're gonna keep running Yeah, we'll keep running In this moment, it's electric Can you see it? Can you feel it? The stream inside is still alive today Yeah, we're on our way
Forgiveness from Mercy Me. I'm positive, encouraging K-Love. Hi. I'm Alex, celebrating God showing up in your life. And uh, I feel like every day is actually a chance to celebrate what God is doing because he's doing something. It's just up to us to recognize. Got Trina here on the line with us. She called in. I tell you, I have uh, really had dealings in the last year with jobs. I went from driving a school bus to driving a transit bus, and then I went to work for FedEx, but they only kept me on for eight days. So I was out of work for a month and a half, and I went to work as a custodian at the high school, and that didn't work out either. But through each time, I never was without a job very long, and God said, just wait patience just just wait because i'm going to open a door for you and i've been able to talk to so many people at this job about my faith and it's just been great wow they gave me chills thank you for that oh oh, you're so welcome it's just it's wonderful what god does Caleb, one minute of encouragement levi lusco you see Isaac here, who's of an age where he doesn't have to do anything that Abraham wants, and yet he clearly is leaning into the wisdom of a wise voice in his life. How can we ever expect to get to the right places if we're not listening to the right voices? The book of Proverbs puts it this way, the way of a fool is right in his own eyes, but he who heeds counsel is wise. And the very fact that this chapter begins with Abraham speaking and doing these things shows that Isaac valued Abraham's wisdom. He's choosing to listen to Abraham's voice. Why would he do that? The answer is clearly in verse one, that Abraham was a person not only old and advanced in age, that's great, but look, the Lord had blessed Abraham in all things. That should be the grounds for which we listen to wise voices. Connect with Levi Lusco at klove.com. Keyword, encouragement. Merry Christmas from Klove. fulfill the reason for our existence here by making disciples. Lord, give us that opportunity because we're available, because we're here, because we're submissive as well as being worshipful. It isn't just that we are in awe of you and so we praise. It is that we are in awe of you and so we submit. And then help us to be obedient to the plan as you've outlined it for proclamation and trust in your power to bring it to pass. We know that we can only reach the world one at a time. Bring us one this week that we can reach. For the sake of your dear son, we pray all these things. You've been listening to John MacArthur here on Grace To You. John is Chancellor of the Master's University and Seminary. His message today showed you the key ingredients, the preparation that you need for evangelism. It's titled Reaching the World. John, as we think about proclaiming the gospel and taking advantage of the receptiveness to biblical truth that tends to exist at Christmas time, what suggestions would you have for listeners who want to take advantage of this season of openness? How can they make strategic use of the Christmas season for sharing the gospel? Um, you know, I think there's a myriad of ways to introduce that kind of conversation. Um, a simple way is to ask a question to say to someone, if you wanted to find an opening for the gospel, this is Christmas season, what do you think is important about Christmas? Do you know why we as Christians celebrate Christmas? Obviously, you have basically joined the world and stopping everything to celebrate this. Do you know why? I think I think starting with that question, rather than sort of attacking people on the front end, do, do you believe in Christ? I think it's helpful to hear them articulate it so that in their own words, they're essentially admitting that they don't understand what it's about. Right. So I I think you want to set the thing up by making them explain where they are in relation to the person of Jesus Christ. And then, you know, the fact that you've said that and you, you, you recognize Christ and you recognize that this is the celebration of his birth. Do you do you understand why he came? Do you do you understand the point and the purpose of a virgin-born 
child, a, a savior who is Christ the Lord. So I, I think, I, I always think it helps if you can have them articulate where they are and then kind of jump in at that point. Because then it feels a little bit more like you're answering questions rather than sort of firing at them. I think you can generate a conversation that can be very productive if you let them explain to you what they think about Christmas, and that opens the conversation. So that's how I would start that conversation in most cases. Good idea. Thank you, John. And friend, as a tool to help explain the significance of Christ's birth to others, let me suggest John's book, God's Gift of Christmas. There's still time to get it to a friend before December 25th. Just contact us today. To order online, go to gty.org and be sure to choose the second day shipping option to ensure delivery before Christmas. Or you can place your order by phone. Call us at 855-GRACE. Our staff is here to help you Monday through Friday, 7.30 a.m. to 4 o'clock p.m. Pacific time. And they will make sure that you get the right shipping option on your order. Our phone number again, 855-GRACE. And thanks for remembering how important this time of year is for us financially. Listener support these last few weeks will help us start 2022 on a strong financial footing, enabling us to reach across the globe with God's truth and connect hungry listeners with the biblical truth they crave. Express your support when writing to Grace To You, Box 4000, Panorama City, California, 91412. Or you can call us at 855-GRACE or go to gty.org. Now for John MacArthur, I'm Phil Johnson, reminding you to watch Grace To You television this Sunday. And then be here next week when John shows you how to worship Jesus as he deserves on Christmas and every day. He's launching a study titled The Jesus of Christmas with another half hour of unleashing God's truth one verse at a time on Monday's Grace To You. That was pre-recorded and sponsored by Grace to You on 99.5 KKLA. Uh, today, when I got in in my little mailbox, I had a Christmas card, and it was from uh, the bosses here. Terry, Chuck, Rodney, thank you so much. It's a cute little card, and I noticed in the back of the envelope, I got a little koala, and I was like, oh, a little Christmas hat. And you've got on the card a panda, a monkey, koala, and a sloth, and they were like, thanks so much, Rodney. You and, you know, I sent them a message. I was like, guys, you really missed an opportunity here. It's like, hey, you don't monkey around. You are a koala tea employee, and that's not just panda ring to you. And I couldn't come up with anything. That was kind of like a pun with sloth, but um, I don't know. I thought it was funny. I still haven't heard back from them yet about my jokes. Huh. I guess I should just keep waiting. For unto us a child is born. To us, a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders. Merry Christmas from 99.5 KKLA. Find hope here. This is Jerry Boyer of Town Hall Finance for townhall.com. I recently attended the annual shareholder meeting of Microsoft where, as an investor, I put a question to the management of the company, asking why Microsoft, like so many other companies these days, seems to feel the need to divert attention away from their day job and dabble in divisive political issues. Turns out that I'm not the only one who shared that concern. The moderator said many people were asking about that on both sides. This is real progress. It used to be that Christians and conservatives were completely MIA from this new front in the cultural battlefield. We didn't show up, and thus we lost by forfeit. But things are changing. Brad Smith, Microsoft's president, responded by saying business leaders do not need to, quote, speak out on every issue under the sun and should stick to issues directly related to business concerns. That's a step in the right direction, but it's not enough. We all need to do more. I'm Jerry Boyer. Well, the cost of everything has gone through the roof. It's Dave. How would you like to have $750 put back into your pocket every single month? Imagine that. What would that do for you and your family? $750 every single month back into your pocket. You call my friend Annie Steich over at Purpose Funding, and that's the average a family saves every single month working a refinance through Andy at Purpose Funding. And they don't even realize, oh, because of the way their debt's positioned, they have a car that has a car payment that's $550 a month. 
they maybe they owe twenty five, thirty thousand on it. You roll that into a loan, it's a hundred bucks. Because I put myself in your situation because every deal is different. So I look at that and I say, if I was Dave, what would I do if it was me? This is why I love Andy and his team at Purpose Funding. 866-566-FUND. 866-566-3863. PurposeFunding.com. DRE number 017699. MLS number 286540. A Christmas message from Grace Christian School of Cyprus. Now there were, in the same country, shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone all around them, and they were greatly afraid. Then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings, great joy, which will be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was an angel, a multitude of heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace, goodwill towards men. Wishing you a Merry Christmas from Grace Christian School of Cyprus. Hi, KKLA family. It's David James. And some of the saddest news from this lockdown and pandemic is its toll on elderly patients in care facilities. It's awful. It's only a news story, though, until it affects one of your parents or grandparents, and then you wonder what you can do about it. If your loved one suffers a fracture from a fall or has bed sores because of poor care, neglect, or even abuse, you can do something about it. Call my friends Berglund Johnson and talk to one of their elder care specialists. The facility may be required to give compensation for the injuries and it may get them to upgrade their care of others so it doesn't happen again. Call Berglund Johnson, 1-800-4-IF-HURT. 1-800, the number four in the words, if hurt. The consultation is free. There are no upfront costs to you and they're going to help you get the answers you need. Berglund and Johnson Law Group, the personal injury legal team that really cares. 1-800-4-IF-HURT. 1-800, the number four, if hurt. Listen on Odyssey. KKLA FM, Los Angeles. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Find hope here. Through the Bible is pre-recorded and it's sponsored by Through the Bible Radio Network on 99.5 KKLA. I would think you'd have to have a whole planetary system. You'd need a sun and a moon and a few stars. You're going to have to stand before him someday. Welcome to Through the Bible. I'm your host, Steve Schwetz. And as we make our way through Leviticus 18 today, our teacher, Dr. J. Vernon McGee, makes it very clear that God is in charge. As we'll see, although we're studying the Old Testament, the message we'll hear is very important to you and me if we want to live lives that are pleasing to God. Now, i got just a few minutes to share some letters before we begin our study, so let's get at it. First, we'll hear from a listener of our French broadcast in Africa. I was really challenged when you said my success does not depend on my intelligence or my physical ability, but in my ability to obey the Word of God. I therefore decided to meditate and study the Word of God regularly. I want to be successful in God's eyes, not man's. Well, isn't that an inspiring letter? Here's another one. This is from a listener of our Serbian broadcast. I am growing older, and my body is failing me, but not my mind. Your program is now my church, as I cannot go anymore on Sunday. So I am listening to Through the Bible and following along in God's Word. My eyes have started to become weak, so I listen more than I read Scripture. Thank you for this gift. I remain gratefully yours. And then here's one. This is from a listener of Through the Bible in our African Portuguese. I am a Cuban citizen, and I have lived in Cape Verde for a few years now. In Cuba, I continually heard that God does not exist. I had never read a Bible or entered an evangelical church. Through the Bible helps me to be very curious to know the truth of God's Word. Please keep up the good work, as I know many, including me, are listening and changing their opinions on who Jesus is and what he means to this world. And then our last letter comes from a prisoner in Poland. 
Thank you very much for your letters and also for the Bible. It is very easy to read. For the last three months, I have been working in the library and am thankful to God that now I have the opportunity to share the good news about the living Jesus, who by his spirit dwells in a human heart. Christian literature is very popular here. Please pray for me and for hearts to be tender and open to God's voice so more people rejoice in the Lord, our Savior. I love you. Well, if you want to join us as we pray for these listeners and millions of others around the world, then join our world prayer team at ttb.org forward slash pray. Together, we'll storm the gates of heaven, praising God for his word and then asking him to change more lives as it goes out each day. Again, that's ttb.org forward slash pray. And don't miss out on the privilege and pleasure of seeking God to answer our prayers in amazing ways. You can sign up today. Now let's pray together as we begin our study. Heavenly Father, we all remain gratefully yours for the opportunity that we have to know you through your word. We humbly ask that you will draw each one of us near so that we can sense your presence. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Here's Through the Bible with Dr. J. Vernon McGee. Now we've come to another section. In fact, it's a brand new section of Leviticus. We have here immorality condemned. And we have the amplification of the seventh commandment. Now, up to this point in Leviticus, we've only dealt with laws concerning ceremonial cleansing. All rules regulated the ritual of religion and those of the home also. But here, beginning with this chapter, God deals with the moral aspect of the lives of his people. So that now chapters 18, 19, and 20 actually constitute a special section which applies the Ten Commandments to life situations. In other words, we're getting right down to the nitty-gritty, friends. Now this section opens with a preamble. Here at the 18th chapter, we'll see it. It closes with one the last part of the 20th chapter. Now, these are very important as they give the reason for the restrictions and regulations of the social life of his people. Now, we're living in a day when the moral foundations have been broken up and removed. And the question arises, who makes the rules? And what is right and wrong? And that's the question of the sneering skeptic and cynic. But the preamble here offers a twofold explanation. In fact, we'll need the postscript also. But let me read now, beginning with verse 1. And I think I should read verses 1 through 5, because there we have preamble to social prohibitions. Then we'll see sexual relations with relatives forbidden. Then sundry sexual sins prohibited. And then offspring forbidden to be offered to Moloch. Then perversion of sex prohibited. And then the nations in Palestine were cast out for committing these sins. Now, this is a very important section. Why? You and I are living in a day that they call it a sexual revolution. I wonder if they've ever read the 18th chapter of the book of Leviticus. May I say to you, nothing new about it at all. They're doing nothing new today at all. There's absolutely nothing new today in this field at all. Now let's look at this, and I'm reading now, beginning with verse 1 of the 18th chapter of Leviticus. And the Lord spoke unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, I am the Lord your God. After the doings of the land of Egypt, wherein ye dwelt, shall ye not do. And after the doings of the land of Canaan, whither I bring you, shall ye not do. Neither shall ye walk in their ordinances. Ye shall do my judgments and keep mine ordinances to walk therein. I am the Lord your God. Ye shall therefore keep my statutes and my judgments which if a man do, he shall live in them, I am the Lord. Now, 
Let's look at this for a moment because this is very important to see. And the reason God now is going to deal with this, he says, you've come out of Egypt and they broke all the commandments down there. They didn't have them, but they were doing the things that the commandments forbid. And you're getting ready to go into the land of Canaan. So many people think when the children of Israel got out of Egypt and went into the promised land that it was all milk and honey. It wasn't. There were some other things there. And there were some Canaanites there. And God saw that they were caught, as we would say today, using the common colloquialism of the day. They were caught between the devil and the deep blue sea, or between a rock and a hard place. The Egyptians back up and the Canaanites ahead of them. And both of them grossly immoral. Why, friends, we call it a sexual revolution. <laughs> May I say to you, this was just doing the same old thing in the land of Egypt, or shall we say, doing what comes naturally. Now, with that in mind, will you notice that in these first five verses, God says, I am the Lord your God. Then he says, I am the Lord. All right, where is that skeptic that said, who makes the rules? God says he makes the rules. Somebody says, well, I don't want to follow them. Fine. God still makes the rules. And breaking the Ten Commandments is wrong because God says it's wrong. And that ought to be enough to satisfy the heart of the child of God. Now, the skeptic could not be satisfied with any argument because he intends to make his own rules as he's his own God. And by the way, if you can create a universe, I would think you'd have to have a whole planetary system. You'd need a sun and a moon and a few stars. And if you can make that, then you make your own Ten Commandments. But as long as you're living in God's world, breathing his air, using his sunshine, drinking his water, walking on his earth, and you're not paying rent, he says you're going to find out that these are the things that I command, and if you break them, you'll pay. And my friend, you'll pay. You may not be arrested by the local police. In fact, the matter is they won't arrest you, but you see, you're going to have to stand before him someday. Then he gives a second reason for following God's rules. Now, over in Leviticus 20, at the end of this section, verse 26, listen to him. And ye shall be holy unto me, for I, the Lord, am holy, and have severed you from other people that ye should be mine. Now, God demands that his people be holy. Purity in all life situations is the command of God. And the child of God is not under the Mosaic system as a way of life. But these regulations are still binding upon his daily life. Now, listen to what Paul says in the epistle. The things that God says are immoral in the Ten Commandments, God still says they're immoral. He hasn't changed on that. Listen to this, 1 Thessalonians 4, 5, and 7. Not in the lust of concupiscence, even as the Gentiles which know not God, that no man go beyond and defraud his brother in any matter, because that the Lord is the avenger of all such as we also have forewarned you and testified, for God hath not called us unto uncleanness, but unto holiness. That's Paul to the Thessalonians, and by the way, it's to you, your child of God. And then over in Ephesians, the fourth chapter, verses 17 and 19. Now listen to Paul. He's speaking to you and me. This I say therefore and testify in the Lord, that you henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk, in the vanity of their mind, having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart, who being past feeling have given themselves over unto lasciviousness to work all uncleanness with greediness. I could give more quotations. First Corinthians, Second Peter. These are things that the child of God in any age is called to live a holy life. Know ye not that you're the temple of God, the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy, for the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. 
Now, God's calling us to holiness. As a friend of mine who's quite a wag, as the preacher said to me, he says, why, even the holiness people are not emphasizing holiness today. Well, I don't know whether they are or not, but somebody needs to emphasize holiness. God asks you to be holy. Then there's another great truth here that I don't want you to miss, friends, and it's this, because right now, great many say, if you're going to reach this crowd, you've got to go down and live with them. You've got to go down and be like they are. You've got to go down and just be among them. I don't want to call names, but a famous evangelist went down on the beach to be among them, and he walked on the streets in New York City to be among them. He didn't reach them. And today there are several organizations that have gone down and tried to be like them. And you want to know something? They are like them. <laughs> and the crowd down there is not like holy people either. May I say to you, God's called us to holiness. And... England was a pretty wicked place. But you remember that John Wesley's followers were called holy people. In fact, they were called Methodists because of the fact their methods were different than that of the world. Now, will you notice as we move in here that God says, I am Jehovah. Somebody says, I'm not a Christian. I, I'm not interested. May I say to you, he's declaring his sovereignty. I said a moment ago, You've been breathing his air. Make your own, friend. Make your own universe. Then you make your own Ten Commandments. Well, he's running this one. And then he says, I am your God. And if you're reconciled to God, you'll want to please him. And the child of God today is to be filled with the Spirit, that he might not live this kind of a life. Now there are sexual relations with relatives forbidden. He says here now, verse 6, will you listen to this? None of you shall approach to any that is near of kin to him to uncover their nakedness. Why? I'm the Lord. You see, the blanket statement is made that no person is to have sexual relations with a near relative. And this entire section amplifies the seventh commandment. Here it refers to anyone who has the same blood relationship as the other person. And it goes on now, he's specific. The nakedness of thy father, the nakedness of thy mother, shalt thou not uncover. She's thy mother. Thou shalt not uncover her nakedness. The nakedness of thy father's wife shalt thou not uncover. It is thy father's nakedness. Now, this warns against disgusting incest. Yet it was in the Corinthian church, and Paul condemned it with great feeling. In 1 Corinthians 5, when he says, it's reported commonly that there is fornication among you and such fornication as is not so much as named among the Gentiles that one should have his father's wife. These are things talked about today, aren't they? God talks about them too. And he lets you know what he thinks about them. Don't tell me today that God hasn't, he has spelled it out, friends. Nobody can make a mistake about this. Now he goes through this, and I'm not going to read all these verses, beginning with verse 9, the nakedness of thy sister, the daughter of thy father, the daughter of thy mother, whether she be born at home or born abroad, even their nakedness thou shalt not uncover, and so on and so on. The fact of the matter is, he covers them all. Why? You see, the different human relationship, which are established by blood or marriage, they're dealt with specifically in this section. Why? Well, relatives are thrown together in a domestic situation in which adultery could be practiced. And God put up these barriers to prevent it. You see, Egypt practiced these sins. After all, Pharaoh and the Ptolemies, they practiced intermarriage of brother with sister. I think that Cleopatra was married to her brother, was she not? Abraham married his half-sister. Cain and Seth both married their own sisters. You see, at the beginning, it was not sinful, but as this awful, poisonous sin got in the bloodstream, why, well, it was actually dangerous. May I say to you, God says, don't do it. You don't get by with it. And they don't get by with it, by the way. You'll find that all the way through the Scripture, God warns against these things. And today, it's positively dangerous, of course, as well as being immoral. He gives certain sundry sexual sins prohibited, 17 through 20. That's the label I've put on this section. And he says, Thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of a woman and her daughter. 
neither shalt thou take her son's daughter, and so on. Now, this relationship, you see, is not by blood, but by marriage. And because of the close relationship of the wife to a daughter or son, any marriage is forbidden. Now, I'm of the opinion that this means that a man's not to have two sisters, even, at the same time. In Leviticus 18, in this section here, in the Berkeley version, it says, do not expose the nakedness of both a woman and a daughter, neither take her son's daughter or daughter's daughter to expose her their blood relatives. It's incest. While your wife is still living, do not take her sister for a rival to expose her nakedness. You see, this was the problem poor old Jacob faced in having two sisters as wives. But remember, that was before the Ten Commandments were given. It wasn't until Moses' day that these were put down. And they've just come out of Egypt where all this was practiced. Then we're told in verse 19, Thou shalt not approach unto a woman to uncover nakedness as long as she is put apart for uncleanness. My friend, you're not beating God at this. I don't care who you are today. You're not getting by with it. Verse 20, Moreover, thou shalt not lie carnally with thy neighbor's wife to defile thyself with her. And believe me, God's throwing up the bulwarks to protect the home from the licentious practices of the heathen round about them. Purity of living was to be the badge of God's family. There was a holy place in the tabernacle for worship, and the home was a holy place in the nation for living. And believe me, there is a great deal in the New Testament on this. Read 1 Corinthians 7 in connection with this. Now, here is something that is quite interesting. They were forbidden to offer their children to Moloch. Verse 21, And thou shalt not let any of thy seed, that is, thy children, pass through the fire to Moloch, neither shalt thou profane the name of thy God, I am the Lord. This seems to be a little out of place, but it's not. And actually, in that day, in some places, the image of old Moloch was heated red hot. And the bodies of children were placed in the arms. And you can imagine how horrible that was. There are those that believe that that could never have happened. In Second Kings, we're told that the Avites made Nabhaz and Tartak and the Sepharvites burn their children in fire. And Jeremiah 7, 31 confirms it. Now, this terrible practice means to profane the name of the Lord. The unnatural brutality of this pagan rite was a deep, profaning the name of the true God, because God loves children. <laughs> the Lord Jesus says, let them come to me. And then you have the perversion of sex prohibited. God condemns it. Read the first chapter of Romans, my friend. The depravity that's mentioned here is common today in the great cities of New York, Chicago, San Francisco, and Los Angeles. And they're all like Sodom and Gomorrah. And that's one reason, friends, makes me weep today when I see the way my country's going. I love this country. I was born here, and I'm American. And believe me, friends, the judgment of God is already upon us. We can't have peace abroad, and we can't have peace at home. Why? God says, there is no peace, saith my God, to the wicked. And he said that three times in Isaiah. Now, let me move on. Verse 23, neither shalt thou lie with any beast to defile thyself. And if you don't think that's being practiced, then you don't know Los Angeles through the police department. They can tell you. Now we are told here the nations in Palestine were cast out because they committed these same sins. And a lot of these soft-hearted and soft-headed preachers today, they just weep because God put out the Moabites. And he put out the Canaanites, too. He put them all out of that land. And why did he put them out? Because he said, the land is defiled, therefore I do visit the iniquity thereof upon it, and the land itself vomiteth out its inhabitants. Well, what was taking place was the land couldn't even stand them. And today it's well known that that land was eaten up with venereal disease. Why do you suppose God told them not to even take a wedge of gold or touch a garment in the city of Jericho. The reason was because I think a harlot by the name of Rahab could have told you. They were guilty of the vilest sins. 
that were imaginable. Don't you think God put them out for a good reason? After all, if a tenant doesn't pay rent, they can be put out. And God happened to own the land. He'll tell him in this chapter a little later on, he says, the land is mine. I'm letting you have it, but the land is mine. They only have a 99-year lease, that's all. And that's the way you and I occupy this earth down here. Three score and tens promised to us down here. That's the only lease. The land is God's. And if he doesn't like the way you're doing, that's his business, not your business. And it'll be well for us to make our business his business because his business is the one that will provide. We'll pick up chapter 19 next time. May God richly bless you, my beloved. As I mentioned earlier, we'd love for you to join us as we dedicate ourselves to our business and taking the whole world the whole world. To find out more about how you can pray along with us, Three, two, one. Oil, oil, oil change here, oil change here, oil change here and there, then just visit our website at ttb.org or call us at 1-800-65-BIBLE anytime. And be sure to join us this weekend for more from our teacher, Dr. J. Vernon McGee, on his Sunday sermon, What Jesus Said About Prayer. Listen online or by app. Again, you'll find us at ttb.org. And speaking of our app, did you miss a study this week? Maybe you want to go back and review one you've already heard. Well, our new Through the Bible app is the perfect way to hop aboard the Bible bus anytime and anywhere. I've been using it, and I really love it. I love how you can follow along with Dr. McGee and the Bible, including right there in the app. That truly is unique. You can also study any book of the Bible at your own pace with the Start Your Journey feature. Hear any book you want on demand, and it'll save your progress so you can pick up right where you left off. You can download the new Through the Bible app in your favorite app store, or you can find it online at ttb.org forward slash listen. And of course, we'd be happy to help you if you need some help at 1-800-65-BIBLE. Just call us. I'm Steve Schwetz, and I'll be here next time holding open the doors of the Bible bus as you hop aboard. Jesus came Ride the Bible bus for five years and you'll be amazed at what God teaches you from his word about what it means to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. It's a blessing that keeps on going. That's what we believe at Through the Bible. That was pre-recorded and sponsored by Through the Bible Radio Network on 99.5 KKLA. What is your favorite Christmas movie? Hey, I am Katie Evans, and I was talking about it earlier with some friends. And uh, my dad, he loves a Christmas story, but Elf is up there too, you know? And so it's like, ooh, I really love Elf. But when I sit here, I'm like, I don't know my favorite Christmas movie. And of course, you know, my mom likes watching uh, Scrooge, any iteration of A Christmas Carol. She loves it. But what about you? What is your favorite Christmas movie? Let me know at Katie at KKLA.com or 818-662-3775. It's a joyous time of year, full of family and friends. Thanks for sharing it with us. 99.5 KKLA. Find hope here. Do you feel anxious, stressed, lonely, or fearful because of COVID? Learn from experts from Cal Hope, covering topics to point you to resources for mental wellness. You'll learn about tools, phone support, and partner organizations at calhope.org to help you or your loved ones in these difficult times. Cal Hope is a program of the California Department of Healthcare Services, bringing you free emotional support. Listen to an expert. Saturdays at 10 a.m. right here on KKLA. Now, a look. You will turn your back on me. Once bitten and twice. And all my hips can be tied in my dairy on dreams. Garage.
and expand into a new space. 150 años de Navidad con Rock Noventero.